Jawanda is going out unless a king or an ace hits the river. There's an ace! It's never easy for them. One time! You call and it's over, baby, like cutting wind, yeah? Hey. Oh, my God, he has aces. <laughs> Let's run it. Oh, my God! Yusuf never loses. Welcome to Barcelona. So come along as we carry the load to every road and country code. Let's light this candle. Now, it's all about the EPT Barcelona main event. We follow it from day two through to its conclusion on Sunday. I am James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my Barcelona babies. We had 726 entries on day 1A, 1,234 entries on day 1B. Registration has only just closed. Are we gonna cross the 2,000 mark? Probably not, but even so, we have never had an EPT main event with this many entries, ever. It's not a failure if we don't hit 2,000. Correct. And this event just keeps growing. There's no reason to suspect that we won't cross the 2K mark next year when the PSPC oh, yeah. will come to town. So here are the chip leaders coming in today to the top 10 stacks in the room. Fyodor Martino will be feeling pretty happy, starting the day with 229 big blinds. Blind start at 800, 1600, with a big blind ante of 1600. Well, let's have a look at some of the famous faces as they arrived here at Casino Barcelona for the start of day two. Khalilou So from Team Pro. Fatima Maria de Melo. Charlie Carroll, quite sensibly attired. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Chris Moneymaker. Disheveled as usual. Will Kasuf in the room, fear not, we've not put him at the feature table today. Tonka, one of the late buy-ins, entered at the start of day two. Luke Schwartz, did he pay for that sandwich he's eating? Ha, I think he recently called me a squid. And I believe we have 17 former EPT champions in the field, including Davidi Katai. And I can tell you there's another former champion, two former champions, in fact, at our feature table. One of them's on the phone, Jan Bubli, one here in Barcelona back in 2005. The other former champ being Jao Barbosa. Interestingly, both Barbosa and Maria Konnikova were platinum pass winners for the first PSPC. Of course, the second was announced yesterday. Uh, we've also got Tom Hall, uh, who is a former online qualifier. Thomas Pern is an online qualifier this time around here in Barcelona. This is level 11 of the EPT Barcelona main event. 800, 1600 blinds. Of course, the big blind also posts the single ante of 1600. And the candle has been lit, Joseph. It doesn't work for me to say, let's light this candle after you say that. Let's keep this candle burning. There we go. You can adapt. It is going to be a long day today. I hope there's a lot of candles standing by. We are going to be joined later on today by Benjamin Sprague, who is still here in Barcelona, and Vincent Hand will be joining us from the island of Malta. As we see an all-in on the very first hand of the day. This is Fikra Kovac, who was uh, relatively short with a stack of 30K. And this is... Somewhat unfortunate for him, should he get called. Waking up with ace deuce suited on the button. You think, oh, I've only got the blinds to get through. 
So Zhao Barbosa, a former EPT champion, does have Kovac dominated with ace eight suited in the small blind. And this is a tough decision on the first hand of the day. You have no idea really how strong or weak this hand could be. I guess in general, ace eight's gonna be ahead of most people shoving ranges in this position. Is it fair to say, Joe, that the big blind to act behind in this particular instance is not really a factor with Pern having 30K himself? Yeah, it's not like uh, he can do any more damage to you than the all-in you're already so calling. Here, yeah. I think it's just a matter of having no information. There's a seat draw overnight. I might end up having to put on a sweatshirt. I think everyone will. It's been warm the whole time. I know. Every, it's every day. Everywhere over here is warm. Yeah. Right. We're in a wormhole. <laughs> it's a very well air conditioned room. I will give them that. Until Probably it's because not. Of the lights, they're trying to keep us cool oh, no, because it. Get, get us on edge. Mess with us. It's, it's like ice cold air. <laughs> Does your shirt say chocolate? I approve. Yeah. Dark. <laughs> something, <laughs> I, something I don't eat. But, uh... Only dark chocolate. Yeah, same. No milk chocolate. No. Yeah, same. Milk chocolate is the devil. Yeah. Milk, Actually, milk white... is the devil. Yeah. White chocolate is bad too. Yeah. Really, really bad things in the world. I'm not sure that. Oh, I remember white chocolate. Oh. <laughs> Time on 15. Wow, clock's been called on Jao Barbosa. The shot clock does not come into play until the start of day three. But having been in the tank for two minutes, he will be forced to make a decision. No, not white chocolate. And he decides to call. Sort of, yeah. So here we go. Vikrit Kovac all in on the first hand of the day. At risk and dominated, running ace-deuce into ace-eight. Hand one, domination nation. A lot of players made it through to day two with pretty short stacks, including Maria Konnikova and Kovac, who's at risk here and looking for a deuce. Has three outs. Not much hope for a chop either. Oh, whoop. Oh. And then the seven, it is always coming, hits the turn. Hand one, always coming seven. Plenty of chop outs now. In fact, nearly a 60% chance of some singing. And there it is. And you know what they say, everyone loves a chop putt. Especially Fikret Kovac when you're dominated like oh, that. Oh yeah. Fikret Kovac. Chop. Opens to 3,500. Round two, Ranilani on the button. The Israeli player starts the hand with 130K. He is the table chip leader with more than 80 bigs. And he's gonna call in position. Put your cards in the box. Thank you. Maria's been here before. You can let her tell you. So he has pocket nines and looks like Jan Bubli's gonna call out of the big blind with King Six, meaning we're gonna go three way to the flop. That flop is seven six deuce with two spades. There it is. So Alani still ahead, Bubli with second pair. And he leads. Yeah. Gets a fold from Tom Hall. This is the kind of move that would win you an EPT in 2005. Alani, I'm sure, trying to decide right now between calling and or possibly raising. I think a lot of times when folks fire out, <clears throat> fire out on a flop like this, it's going to be a hand, yeah, that nines are doing very well against. And it looked like Alani put them all in and Boobly called. Wow. Alani shoves on Boobly and indeed, Yan has called all in and it's going to need some help. Going to need a king or a six to survive here. Doesn't look too worried about it. Mm -hmm. 
So five outs for the 2005 EPT Barcelona main event champion. Everyone's yawning. It's your fault. You just made me yawn. Mm -hmm. Everyone's yawning. Yawn, yawn, yeah. Uh, it's oh. over. <laughs> Drawing dead on the turn. A set of yeah. nines for Elani okay, and yeah. Jan Bubli dispatched. So it's a Gibbons oh, yeah. from Kovac limping under the gun with the Queens. I don't either. No. I always wanted to when I was really young. Never really pulled it off. Look at Barbosa just no, calling. Inclined, you know? <laughs> I had a Not falling for it. Situation when I was in high school. I'll let you play. No, 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 no. Go, you go on. Is Tom Hall going to get squeezy here from the small? You do have to be a little suspicious if you're paying attention about that Gibbons. The old under the gun limp. Tom's also just calling. Big blind. Option. Free flop. There he is. So that means we're going five way to the flop. Well, this plan is it working out exactly how Kovac wanted it to. We didn't know we were supposed to join the party. Well, queens are still good. He checked it too. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome, guys. Everyone checks. Still no one's caught anything, right? Tom's got an up and down draw now. Not a ton of ways to hit it. With those two queens. Kovac is still checking. What is happening? How are you not afraid of this board at this point? I guess selani has got the club draw as well. Yeah. He, he might bet this. Well, he's in position. It's been checked to him. He's also the dominant chip leader at this table with more than 105 bigs. If you have queens, you have to jam when there's a bet here, right? Second biggest stack at the table is Barbosa with just shy of 70 bigs. Yeah, I feel surely Kovac's plan here is to check shove. 7,000 the bet from Alani. And especially if Tom Hall decides to call with his open-ended straight draw. Which he does. I mean, if you've been playing this hand the way you have to try and trap, to try and get some dead money, absolutely. <laughs> there it is. Question now is, does anyone feel price dead? Yeah, and Boobly may have left the table, but 2005 poker is alive and well. How much? Too, that's too much, Tommy. 30. Yeah. yeah, he's three to one against, and he is not getting three to one on his money. Just thinking about those 7,000 chips he put in there. Singing to himself? Bye. Well, Kovac got a reasonable amount of value out of those queens in the end. I mean, that's really what you want to do with pocket queens is take a flop four ways and get all the way to the turn. Let's have a look at some other players in the field. Uh, Mustafa Kanit is playing here on day two. Luther never Luther. As is Patrick Antonius, who we saw playing in the Celebrity Pro Invitational yesterday. I wonder how much that massage therapist is paying him. 
Ben Heath, rep in the UK. And pretty hot as of late. Andre Akari into day 1B. Rocking his patch on day two. Good buddy. Talking about rocking the patch, Steve Enriquez, Spanish streamer. And there is Julian Martini, the runner-up in the first PSPC, the second to be held here in Barcelona next year. So Alani opens from the hijack with ace-queen suited. And looks like it's round to the blinds. Tom Hall in the small. Ace nine of hearts. Tom starting the hand with 30 bigs. Ja Bracada. All in. Good luck. Good luck, all in player, and you are going to need it. Oh, yeah. Because it's a situation where we have 48. Domination Nation. Makes the correct decision. Calls with the ace queen, and Tom Hall is at risk and behind. Very, very at risk. Let's see a nine on the bluff. Let's see if we can oblige Mr. Hall with his request. Denied. <laughs> Some not nice. horrible turns for him. Oh! <laughs> nine on the turn. Well, he still has to dodge a king or a queen on the river. It's not over yet. Queen! Ooh. Wow. Luck, Domination Nation. Gentle. Domination yes, Rotation. Nice and then full rotation back to next. Ultimately, Tom Hall's out. We have to figure out what we call that, but it's so infrequent. I don't think we'll ever need it again. I think it's domination re-implementation. That's the one. It's been confirmed that the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship is coming back and will be at Casino Barcelona in August 2020. It's your chance to follow in the footsteps of Ramon Kalilas turned his free entry to the first PSPC into a $5.1 million score. Over the next 12 months, Platinum Passes are being awarded live and online. You can win yours by playing at PokerStars. Yes, good luck indeed to online qualifier Thomas Pern, who is all in. What a Pern. For his last 22K. Just shy of 15 big blinds. Oh, hello. Yeah, he's going <laughs> to get called in at least one spot. <laughs> Will he get some protection? Yeah. Just a call. Oh, just a call. I got. I really got to learn these chip colors. All I do is laugh at Puyol. Well, everyone else has folded. And again, a domination situation and Pern looking for a six to survive. All I ask is if you're going to put the king out there eventually, don't put the six out. Well, 
Let's run it. There's a six on the flop. He's a little more worried now, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't <laughs> give him that glimmer of hope. Yeah, don't do it to him. Only to drown Whatever. him on the river. Okay. Just has to fade. Two cards in the deck. Has to fade that king on the river. Oh, come on! What? That's happened twice now in two consecutive hands. Not cool, Zeus. <laughs> and we lose Thomas Pan. Elani with queen three of spades on the button. Raises to 3,200 and Maria Konnikova is all in from the small with ace nine. The doctor is not seeing patience right now. Not getting two to one. Not sure how light he thinks Maria would make this move. This is probably one of the best case scenarios for him to have live cards. <laughs> Maria is bored by the length of time you're taking. I think a lot of contagious. <sighs> Anybody else's eyes water when they yawn? My girlfriend always thinks I'm crying. I'm like, no, I'm just really bored. Sorry, I don't care for pretty little liars. Is that what it's called? Little big things, little big lies. What's it called? Sorry, I don't watch it. The girl show on HBO? The woman Nicole Kidman? Yeah. Yeah, I think it... Pretty Big Lies? Now I'm getting confused. Little something Baby li Something li Little Babies and Lies. Little Big Horn. He calls. Wow. Positive tilt is real. I guess it was a very short stack. And to be fair, he does have live cards and is getting solid equity here. I'll take it, you know. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, you really don't want to get knocked out by the guy that calls you with queen three. It's really more annoying. Well, ace high holding. Maria needs to fade queens and threes. Ooh. Five cards. Elani can hit to eliminate Maria Konnikova. He's pretty good at hitting these. Nope, he misses on this occasion, and Maria Konnikova survives. He must really like her, I think, maybe, to call with queen three there. When I saw that river, I was like, if that's a three, I'm just gonna... I think <laughs> if it's an open shove, a fold, but considering he'd already opened and had chips invested, I think it's the right call. It's probably not. I'm not saying it's it's bad by any means. It's just <laughs> on the surface, you see it, and you're like, oh. I'm just never lucky in those spots, you know? What? I never hit the river. Never lucky. So Maria has doubled up to 20 bigs and is no longer the shortest stack at the yeah. table. Francisco it's Benitez been, has 18 before, bigs. Okay. Action folded to Maria Konnikova. She's out. Welcome. And looks like we've got another new player coming to the table. Welcome. 
Meanwhile, Kovac is woken up with Kings in the small. Having fun. It's hard to limp with him in the small. Possible still. Is he going to limp? Nah. Yep. Just calls. Barbosa with the Queen Jack in the bag. <laughs> He Checks it. She has all the chips, yes. <laughs> he has knocked out every single Fantastic. Yep. I've already changed we the call two him, tables. We call him the Terminator. <laughs> so you are the survivor? Right? I'm the sole survivor so far. You just came right so now, I feel, too, right? I feel like my luck is turning. And it's always on the river. OK. Oh. That's what I was expecting the three on the river. Jeez. Oh, had to actually bet it this Everything time. Were underdog or something? No, he actually was ahead. I got a game eight queen two. Mean Jack yeah. somehow not nine. drawing dead. Yeah. Uh, he, he joined like thirty big blind small blind. I called nine on the turn, queen on the river. Oh. Yeah. One and a half thirty six gems, like fifteen big. So it's time six, six, I checks. Six on the six flop. On the flop. I tell him. Well, have to be careful from the river. Yeah. river and it does induce a bet from Barbosa. Only two. 7,300. Yeah. Meaty. Ah, no, okay, there was one with the nine. Yeah, there was but one. Oh, was yeah, he had pocket nines, and yeah. he had king six. Okay, nine. Take a king and... No, no. He, there was no king. Oh, okay. There was a nine. Okay, okay. But there was a nine. There was a nine right away, so yeah. there was just zero sweat. So <laughs> what are the actual survivors, uh, apart you two, I mean, of the table? Who started the day here? Um, it's just one hour ago, actually. Just, just you yeah. and uh, this guy. Ah, OK. So all the other guys know you pretty well right now. So the two of us and the two, these four. Or well, two Bosa does not get that. Yeah. So oh, he's, he's a gentleman, I guess. Kovac checks again. He's so creative. Ah, he's new, too? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Check out this line with Kings. Limps the small, yeah, bets the, the flop. <laughs> Check calls turn, Solid player right now. and he's going to check and deuce on the river, too. Wow. I love it. A bluff of 21,000, near enough full pot What's from Barbosa. Julia. Nice to meet you, Julia. Maria. Hi, Maria. Where if he from? folds, this will be the greatest Italy. hand I've ever seen. We're in Italy. Well, actually, I'm from Naples. I am believing in Milan since, uh, I don't know, five years. Both beautiful. White. The new player at the table, by the way, is Julio Astarita. Having a nice chat with Maria Konnikova. What do you like better? What? Naples or Milan? I figured he was checking to induce well, a bluff. You should never ask that to the Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was a kid, my mother used to say <laughs> in Italian, said, like, go to Naples as an insult. <laughs> Nobody would care about so. She wouldn't say the F word. There we go. <laughs> Finds a call. <laughs> <laughs> Slow rolls. And Kovac is now second in chips at the table with near enough a 60 big blind stack. No, I understand where. Uh, Genoa. Okay. Okay, Naples, Milan, or Genoa. Let's go. <laughs> there is Mark Telcher, champion in London back in 2005. Nearly won a second EPT title two years later when he finished second here in Barcelona. Nicola Schwiti won the EPT Grand Final in Monte Carlo in 2010. Let me guess where they won. Okay. Chino Reem. PCA. This year. I almost didn't get it. Next up, Alexi Boyka. Pra Pra Malta, 2016. Malta, well done, 2016. Joe. Stephen O'Dwyer. The EPT Grand Final 2014. 2013, good guess. And I hope you get this one. Piotr Nazinski. So here's the new feature table. So we've got Kaladu So, we've got Tonka, we've got Fraser McIntyre. Remember back in the day, Joe, when he was the original qualifier? Thank you. And how can we not be excited about the table chip reader? Haftor Heilensen. Uh, Florian Duta is a player we've seen many times on the EPT. He hails from Romania. You're Romania. Oh, the old ones are the oldest. Yes, 1,000, 2,000 with a 2K big blind ante. We're about to kick off level 12.
seen Calado in action yet but he might play the jack nine of diamonds starts with 46 big blinds and he opens to 5k blinds right now at 1000 2000 with a 2k big blind ante uh oh ace queen of diamonds big the hand for key. key just gonna call on the button it's a pretty, it's a very strong hand, James. One of those that if you put in a three bet and then Kalidou decides to four bet, all of a sudden you're not so happy. So definitely don't mind taking a, a call here in position. Okay, so top pair for key, second pair for so. No diamonds out there. And I imagine that Kalidou will call at least one bet. Yeah, this is a board he's going to want to do a lot of checking on. Queen Jack Deuce out of position. The in position caller is going to do fairly well on this board. But certainly going to stick around for one. Picks up a gut shot on the turn. And there are two flush draws out there. So we may see him even try and take his hand to a river here. It's possible that Key is bluffing with something like King 10 or some Ace 5 of Hearts, something like that. Well, 25,000 in the middle, and Key is barreled for 14K. No selfies at the table, please. <laughs> A new rule on the EPT, restricting phone use at the table. Players asked to step away from the table if they wish to use their, use their phones for any reason. Kalidou definitely having a think about this one. Looks like he is off to a river card. He has some chance to improve. His hand can definitely still be good. You say king 10, ace 10, maybe some hearts, maybe some spades, still bluffing. Eight's not going to change too much. He checks a third time. If you're key, are you betting river? Yeah, I, th I think definitely. I think your hand is really strong. Um, Kalidou's going to have a lot of hands like ace-jack, king-jack, jack-10. Maybe even sometimes if he wants to protect his range, he'll have a hand like queen-10, check-calling the flop, that doesn't necessarily want to bet three streets itself, but is a very good hand to bluff catch and call down. So a, a clear value bet from key. He's gone 27,000. The problem for Kalidou here is he may feel like this is one of the best hands that he checks. If, if he doesn't ever check a queen, then the jack's going to be the best hand he has. And if he's folding the best hand he has, then he's going to do very well when he's bluffing. Very sizable pot. There's about 40 big blinds in the middle at the moment. Very important situation for Kalidou so to arrive at the right decision. He's a cool guy, Kalidou. Arguably the second coolest guy on Team Pro. Makes the call here. He's Money maker's not that cool. He's going to take a big one over 107,000 in the middle. Yeah, he's going to have the second biggest stack at the table now with close to 150K, close to 75 big blinds. Hey, Romero's all in, 39,500. Blind v. Blind with Parker, Tonka, P. Talbot.
really bad suits. Or just one, I guess. Right. And calls it off with a king queen. Romero will need to fade Tonkas out to double up. One card to come. Romero just a river away from having 81,000 chips again. And the five is safe. So a dent to Tonka stack. Cooler blind v blind. Two pretty strong hands. So and all the chips end up in the middle. Romero now playing 40 bigs. You're not going to believe this. Caladuso's got aces again. Then raise 5, Raises up again to 5,000. McIntyre with the ace jack offsuit. Aladu with just 31,000 chips behind, about 15 big blinds. McIntyre decides to go for the re-raise. When we see a re-raise here, it's never going to be with the intention to fold, I would imagine, versus the short stack open. McIntyre most likely deciding that his hand is strong enough. Bumps it up to 13,000. And action back to Kaladu So. There are very few hands that Kaladu would want to trap with here off short stacks because hands like tens and nines and jacks and even ace king if it misses, they're all somewhat vulnerable to flops. And it's not like he's going to peel hands like nine ten suited because he's not deep enough. So I will say a call is a little bit suspicious. He does decide to make the shove. And McIntyre, as we mentioned, once he decides to re-raise his hand versus the short sack, is now committed. Oh He'll find himself up against the ace and the ace of Kaladu. So mm. That's pretty cool to get aces in back-to-back -back hands. May not have got any action the first time, but looking good for the double up second time around. Nine to one favorite with five cards to come. But if we do get some ugliness, Kaladu So is the at-risk player. I'm not gonna do it. Yep, from fr frustration of not getting paid to a <laughs> monster favorite for this spot now. <laughs> I'll take the chop just now, actually. Oh, I have we need it. Nine, eight, four, three, or Jack. I have eight, four, three. Four. No Double chop. Up. Nice answer. Double up for Kaladu So. <coughs> four, four, eight. Four, eight. Yeah. Uh, that puts right back in the mix. Seventy seven thousand chips. Around 38 big blinds, plenty to play with. He's king for Duta and he's open to 4,500. Pocket eights for Kaladu So. Just around 41,000 chips, it's about 20 big blinds. The hand isn't going to do too well taking flops unless you hit that eight, which is quite seldom. Could definitely see Kaladu push the chips in here. Hand. Three, There's the call, and we are going to flip that coin. The two overcards against the pocket mm -hmm. pair. Classic race underway the at the feature table. It's exciting. They get to scream in the chat for whoever they want, you know? Everybody loves all ends. Spectating, I mean. 
Canada do so. The player at risk. It's weird to say because like you're insanely lucky, but you're definitely losing this one. Oh, oh shit. Still. Stone dead, I think. So we saw an eight-fold of priest Braggy, just the one out. Hey, don't, don't, don't go anywhere. <laughs> eight. Bang! One more try. We referenced try. earlier on that Florian Duta famously, huh? famously got one-outed yeah, by Jamila von Perga. Is the same going to happen to him at the hands of Kaladu So? Oh, no. And Kaladu is eliminated. God, you run so good. He does. So this cool. one was in the big one. I guess so Carl pulled around. I had the eight. I didn't want to tell him. Yeah, you had the eight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say nothing. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I don't want to do she has opened yeah. with Ace Jack. It's, it's, it's such a, it's, there's no like law for this. Like when you move like table Obviously to table, made it. Feature, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called the 4K rather yeah, there with King Ten. McIntyre wakes up with Queens in the big blind. Premium holding and a short stack. He's going to be all in. I think he's going to be jamming a little bit wider. Once you see Hillenson call, there's some. Presumes dead chips in the middle. She's ace jack suited, certainly strong enough to contest against an all in. He does make the call. This is it, it's really happening. Queens is a really big hand, and it will make McIntyre a big favorite for the 78,000 chip pot. I'm out, right? Because I don't like Oh, no, we're gonna count you in. We're gonna count you in anyways, though. Really? Yeah, yeah, why not? You know? We'll, we'll treat you, man. We'll treat you. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. oi, oi, oi. Ooh, it's never easy. Big sweat now for McIntyre's Queens. It's his tournament life on the line. He's got a fade, an ace, a jack. Five of spades. Excuse me, an ace and all the hearts. Running jacks, running straights. Oh, there's one jack. This could be a case of too many outs. 14 that's just seems that's now, though. That's, that's a an, now, like an that's abundance good. That's of good. cards. Yeah, now he has too many outs, even, you know? Yeah. Good Tonka yeah. P meme. That's too many outs. Cool. Is it true? Can you miss? Can you miss? Yeah, it's done. It's happened. Misses. Miss? It's happened. Woo. Too many outs. Get the shots in. McIntyre doubles. Cool. Drink. Thank you. And right, what it seems we like shot of? the talk is I'm over. Uh, what do you want? What the? What the? <laughs> the shots are going to be ordered. It's not often I get a hold against half the deck. <laughs> Queens again. This time, Shah finds them in the cutoff. And raises it up, 4,000. Who's the German pro who's a cool cat with all the chicks? Schaff. You're damn right. I thought I was safe from that sort of material with Joe out of the booth, James. The frightening thing is only the second level of the first day of our coverage. <laughs> Tonka flops best. Tonka P. Finds a top pair with his ace. Check, check on the flop. Tonka checks again. Shaft making a value bet now, trying to get called by a hand like King Jack or Jack Nine or Ten Nine. Of course, we can see that Tonka is much stronger than that. He has the ace. Tonga goes for the raise up to 11,000. Chet raise on the turn. <laughs> and a three bet from the Queens, and Schaff will take it. Gets Tonga to lay down the best hand. So that's the end of the level. Looks like we have 456 players remaining. So here's the new lineup 
on the main stage, we have the current chip leader, Benjamin Shillow. We also have Andre Akari from Team PokerStars Pro. New blind level 1,000, 2,500 for the 2,500 big blind ante. It's level 13 of the main event. Right. Mick. Marion Mick. Do you remember the movie uh, Cobra? No, sir. With Sylvester Stallone? No. In the movie Cobra, Sylvester Stallone's name was Marion Cobretti. <laughs> Cobra for short? Cobra for short. How convenient. And he just, he didn't like his first name because it, in America, Marion is feminine. So we went by Cobra instead. Over Cobra sating. Zhu with the 6 5 in the big blind. He'll defend against the Rays. That's Quan Zhu to you. King I flop, King 8 5, two spades, pair of eights for Marion Mick. Bet. Classic poker. Not to be totally outdone, Ju does in fact have a pair of fives as well. And now he's got two pair. And the nut flush draw for Mick. This is this is a classic poker hand developing. One pair versus a better pair versus two pair versus a potential flush. flush. That remains to be seen. It's a bet of 11,000 from Zhu, leading out now from the big blind. Mick picking up that nut flush draw, as Joe alluded to. I don't think he's ready to fold. Still could have the best hand if Zhu decides to bluff with something here like 6-7. Is raising ever a possibility here? I don't think so. You still have a nice bluff catcher. Your eight can still be good. And you don't really want to have to raise and your opponent goes all in and you can't get to see a river card with the ace of spades in your hand. Ooh, baby. How about that, Joe Stapleton? Now we've got two pair versus two pair. And Zhu with the betting lead that he took over on the turn, most likely going to fire again here. If Mick has a hand like ace jack with the ace of spades or ace queen with the ace of spades, he just improved to a pretty good hand. So Zhu will look to get value from it. Is your, when you're making this value bet, as we see, it's immediately called 23-5 was the bet. Just about half pot, a little over. When you're making that value bet, are you at all thinking about making an amount so you don't value cut yourself too bad? Or is that not even a consideration? I think it's a pretty clear value bet. You're still gonna get occasionally bluff caught by a king. You're occasionally, your opponent's gonna river an ace. But it's one of those where it's a pretty easy bet fold as well. Kick it on over here to Patrick Antoniusville. Playing a hand against Vlado Benicevic. And looks like Antonius is checked. Now the board is four, eight, seven, ace, two diamonds, two hearts. And okay, so Antonius is raised. This bet was for, for 8,000. Patrick has made it 30. Benicevic giving it a think. That is an all in from Banachevich. Patrick. Doesn't look too happy about it. Does not look super, super happy, but his chips are in his hand, and I can't imagine they'd be in his hand for no reason whatsoever. And now they're in the middle. Antonius calls. Ace five for Banachevich. Ace nine for Antonius. River's a jack. Antonius is going to double up. 180,000 chips now for Patrick. Banachevich down to 25K. What a man. And what a hand. What a man, what a hand.
Fuck Connor it, Rove looks like a TV character, but I'm so bad at watching stuff that I can't think who it is, and I love a bad lookalike. He's a so, very famous TV character. This is awesome yeah. stuff, Vincent. He's a bad lookalike <laughs> for someone who's on TV. <laughs> I mean, I know there's the I whole incomplete information thing, but well, he's opened with pocket eights. Andre Akari has oh, ace yeah. king, and Akari has got fewer than 35 big blinds. I think we know what the end result of this pre-flop raising war is going to be, as Akari three bets to 22,500. There is the shove, there is the call. We are flipping the coin. Classic race underway at the feature table. Ace King against pocket eights. And Andre Akari is the player at risk. He needs to hit to survive. All of Brazil calling for an ace or a king right now. It's a pretty huge pot. Whoever wins this is pretty much going to be guaranteed to get themselves into the money. Let's deal Andre Akari's fate. Safe flop for eight. Six outs for Andre, an ace or a king needed. Turn card is a five. Same outs. Andre looking for an ace or a king. No Greenstein, no king. Andre Akari eliminated. Just going to check the stacks, but we think he was 11, covered. 11-5. Five. Yep, confirmation. Andre Akari's done. We are going to step away from the main stage and take you to a hand at the outer tables where there is potentially a three-way all-in. A situation where Rodrigo Pacelli Prosciutti moved all-in pre, got called by two players. One of those players, Griffin Benja, has moved all-in on the flop. Action is now on Thiago Viana. It's a seven-high flop. 7-6-3 with two hearts is the board. So, Prasuti all in pre. Griffin Benja has shoved the flop. Yana with the decision. Yana folds, showdown. Griffin Benja tabling 9-7 for top pair, deuces for Prasuti. And a pair of sevens is good. And Griffin Benja is now up over 100K, still relatively short. Meanwhile, Rodrigo Prasuti is eliminated. Anywho, we got top pair against second pair here. Shallow electing to continue. I think it's a board when he opens from early position versus the big blind that he's going to want to bet mostly. We'll be surprised to see him bet again. Ponmarav. Got to feel pretty confident that he has the best hand now. 
his opponent very likely to double barrel if he has any sort of flush draw. Not likely to check a better hand on the turn. So I'd feel very comfortable betting reasonably large here. Frustrating size for Shallow. If he elected to raise, it could be somewhat interesting with the Ace of Hearts, but I just don't think he's likely to have checked too many flush draws on a turn, so it might not be very believable. Given the price, I think he probably just needs to pay it off. Unless he thinks, of course, that his opponent just doesn't have enough bluffs for just under half pot. But again, the problem for him is if he doesn't check any kings that he opens from under the gun on the turn, this might be the best hand that he has on the river. But again, all just boils down to whether he thinks his opponent bluffs his size ever. Oh wow, he's going to raise. This is a super interesting spot for Ponorev. He has a really good hand to make this call with. Once his opponent makes it 100k, he's pretty much just repping flushes. So how many flush draws is he going to check on the turn? Maybe ace nine of hearts, eight nine of hearts, a couple of hands. But everything else, that's a flush draw. So likely to barrel. I think you can probably discount queen jack as well. So unlikely to check the turn. With the King of Hearts in his hand and the Jack, just in case the opponent did get tricky with Jack Queen from time to time. Does make the call, I like it. I think Shallow tried to rep that nut flush draw, but just doesn't check enough flush draws on the turn to really represent them very well and picked off very nicely. That's a huge pot, 226,000 chips. So close to the bubble as well, I'm impressed with that call. Big call, which gives Nikolai Ponomarev a 100 big blind stack near enough with half an hour left to play on this level and 30 players away from the money. As we see Mick fold, haven't seen a whole lot of that going on so far. Lambrecht also been pretty quiet. It's pretty natural for all of these players wanting to be pretty snug. All of the middling stacks, absolutely no reason for them to get two out of line. We're 20 spots away from the money right now. 8,000 euro min cash. We already one level before stay here. I already here two levels. That's your second level. Ponorev going to complete with the 5-4. No player connecting very hard on the ace-a-6. Lambrek, as the original opener, might be tempted to just see bad here and try and take it down. But he does elect to check it back. Still has the best hand on the turn. I just want you to know I'm back, Fenton, but keep going because you're doing an amazing job. I panicked, I swear. I actually lost pictures for about half a second and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I ruined it. James Hardigan is never going to trust me again. It looks like we are just going to see it check down here and Lambrecht most likely to scoop. Zoo is going to make a bluff at it. This is 
going to be a pretty significant portion of his stack. Only has 52k remaining. If this goes wrong, he's going to put himself in danger of not cashing. I guess it's not that much. Only about 20%. Kind of interesting what he's trying to represent here. Maybe the occasional club flush. Does he have a lot of aces that are going to want to check the turn? Does he actually flat with many pocket pairs off his stack size pre-flop? Seems unlikely. And Ponmarev, absolutely fearless, going to raise with the 5-4. Neither player with a whole lot going on. The 5-4 shown the aggression. If we see a queen high call here, I'm going to go ahead and say it would be the wildest call we've ever seen on this stream. So impressed with Ponmarev so far. Made that really nice call with the king jack with the king of hearts. Now he just picks up on what's going on. Takes down another pot. Continues to chip up. Nice indeed. Playing 100 big blinds. Meanwhile, Kwon Ju is down to 14 big blinds. And we have reached the dinner break here on day two with around 315 players remaining. Marion Mick is chip leader at our feature table. Ju now the short stack at the table. And very soon, we are going to be paying players because the bubble is looming. The money bubble approaching here on day two of EPT Barcelona.